Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. My name is Noah Ruiz. I'm a designer here at Adafruit. Joining me every week is my brother Pedro. Good morning, everybody. I'm Pedro Ruiz, creative tech here at Adafruit. And every week we're here to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is a show where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects for you folks. Hello, everybody. Hanging out in the Discord chat room throughout the show. If you'd like to drop in any comments and questions and suggestions, or random banters and stuff, memes are great. You can do so by hitting up the Discord server. We're hanging out there right now in the live broadcast chat room. So if you are new to Discord and you want to invite URL to that, you can use discord.gg slash Adafruit. And that gives you an invite code to the uh, to the lovely community of many thousands of people. And we appreciate everybody tuning in today. We're also hanging <laughs> out on Facebook, Twitch, and of course on YouTube in the chats as well, so you can go ahead and give us a shout out there. Yes, but special shout out to the folks in Discord. Thank you for hanging out with us. Give so the uh, shout out yeah, to shout Mr. Out. Certainly Bruce. We got S. Riggs. Hello, uh, Stuart. Stuart Riggs, hanging out. Jim Fetty Hen too. And uh, Jim Hendrickson, uh, Alvaro, Fetty too, and Rawson, Susan, Cup of Coffee. Cup of Need coffee. some more of that. And to Wester. That's a great name. Thank you all for hanging out. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, let's let's dive into the to the to the housekeeping. Are we ready? Ready for the housekeeping? Ch All right. So check out the free deals that are going on, ongoing still while supplies last. Uh, for orders that are ninety nine dollars or more, you'll get a free Perma Proto automatically added to your cart. For orders that are one forty nine or more, you get the free Perma Proto half size breadboard plus a randomly selected. Adafruit Stem QT breakout board. If you have an account with Adafruit, we'll make sure you don't get the same one twice. For orders that are two hundred dollars or more, you get that randomly selected Stem QT board, the Perma Proto half size breadboard, and free UPS ground shipping for U.S. continental only. And for orders that are two ninety nine or more, you get the free ground shipping continental only Stem QT breakout, a Perma Proto half size breadboard, and a Circuit Playground Express flagship product that runs just about every type of programming language. Circuit Python, Arduino, what is it? Rust, Go, Tiny Go, Make Code, Make Code, Make It. So check them out. These get automatically added to your account. And if you don't have an account, please do register to, uh, to make one. It's free and you get perks like, um, like this stuff. So uh, put in order <laughs> when you can. and. Um, I'll tell you later tonight, you will have access to a 10% off coupon code if you hang out on during Ask an Engineer. So there we go. All right, let's keep on moving. We're going to do newsletters. New, new newsletters once a week. Adafruit does a weekly newsletter. This comes into your inbox, so you need to subscribe to that manually. Go to adafruit.com slash newsletter, and you can subscribe to that if you're into it. Mm -hmm. Focused on the products that get added throughout the week, mostly on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Okay, okay. Circuit Python meetings happen every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern time, with the exception of USA holidays. This week, uh, it happened on Monday, so uh, shout out to the team um, for doing the meeting. It's, it happens in Discord, it's, it's recorded live, and you can check the archive shortly after it uh, gets posted. So check that out every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern time, Shut up. And I kind of skipped a little bit here. Back over to the newsletters. This one's a daily. That's why we call it Adafruit Daily. Adafruit Daily is a way to subscribe to all sorts of different categories of news, such as Python on hardware, IoT monthly, 3D printing, biohacking, maker business, and much, much more. So check out adafruitdaily.com for your super fast speeches. Check out the jobs board by heading over to jobs.adafruit.com. You can see all the different job listings that are available if you are looking for a gig or if you're an employer looking for a maker with maker skills, you can post up your skills and your job. Check them out. There are some new ones here. Here is an exhibit fabricator three. It's new here in um, Minnesota, St. Paul, Minnesota. This is the Science Museum of Minnesota. That sounds like a really cool gig. So check that one out that was posted in June 11th. Yeah, lots of other ones like sheet metal, CAD worker, hardware engineer, manufacturing assistant. Very, very cool jobs. Jobs are there, um, so check them out. Thank you, Lamar and Phil, for putting this together. And of course, the web team for doing this. Um, 
took a minute. Remember when they were developing it for many months, and here it is. It's, it's awesome to, uh, to come here every week and talk about it. Help is wanted, and we need your help. So there we go. Put an Adabot to work, Adabot to work there. All right. I'm just collecting my thoughts. <laughs> what, what do I have left here? Just looking over yeah, some yeah, yeah. of the open safely thing. We're going to start retiring some of the COVID specific. Right, I got one. Here we go. June, yeah, Juneteenth, 2021. This is 150, 156th anniversary. So June 19th is Juneteenth. It's a celebration of emancipation of the last slaves in the U.S. This holiday deserves all its recognition. Last year, Adafruit added Juneteenth as an official holiday for all Adafruit employees. But since it falls on a Saturday this year, uh, the team gets a holiday on Friday, Yay. so a day before. Mm -hmm. Along with the uh, paid day off, Adafruit blog will be posting history, news, and support of Juneteenth. So be sure to check back. We'll have lots of fun posts. Well, you know, useful posts. All right, so back over to the live broadcast chat room. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. As you were saying before, nice banter's going on. Uh, Mr. Certainly Bruce was asking for suggestions on a adjustable uh, Husky desk. Mm -hmm. Definitely go post some links on your favorite adjustable desks. Yes, good, good. That's a great topic. Yeah, let's go ahead and jump into this week's learn guide. Yay, this week's learn guide. So last week um, was, it got published a little bit after the show, so we get to kind of walk through it this week, so. We might Here have we another one that gets posted later today. <laughs> yeah, maybe. We'll see. Seems we'll see. We'll see. What's the schedule going yeah, on yeah. now? So here it is, the Funhouse IoT Fume Extractor and Air Quality Sensor. This was a collab project with Liz Clark. It was her idea, and she wrote the code for it. And I got to work on the 3D printed enclosure for it. And we tag teamed on the learn guide. It's a chonky learn guide. Lots of this information is here. Huge. Look at the side panel of all the different sections <laughs> for this. Super useful. We've been using this in all of our soldering projects. For sure, and it's, it's a great I big build. It. It's uh, it's gonna, it's it's super smart. You can you can it's modular, so you could customize it to do whatever type of thing you want. It's using STEMIQT, so you can like just play around with different sensors if you want to do some uh, different type of uh, data logging. It's a really good use of of uh, display I/O, play, uh, playing around with different fonts and different uh, bitmap images. There's a lot going on. Lots of fun layers to this, and of course you got that IoT layer. We can log your data and, and visually visualize it with a line chart in Adafruit I.O. And one of the coolest things that people were commenting on the video is having the ability to have it react to different uh, sensory inputs like light or humidity. Dark. And you would have that uh, be as part of the uh, sensing the uh, CO2 and the solder fumes. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take a moment to adjust your camera because I completely forgot to do so. <laughs> yeah, it's going to take a minute. So while Pete, well, I kind of need to show this shot. So bear with us while we adjust our our see. lovely. Uh, yeah, there's two layers of this. There's there's two. See that one there and that one there. Yeah, this one. Ultimate flexibility. We need a cam for the cam <laughs> to show what's crazy mounting contraption. So yeah, this is a Noctua fan. It is controlled through PWM. That means you can control the speed of the fan, and it is mapped to uh, the uh, the air quality sensor. So this is the EMC 2101. This is an I squared C or STEMA QT uh, breakout for controlling a fan over PWM. So you got your your, your daisy chainable STEMA QT connectors, and right here, this is where the secret sauce is. There is a little fan. It's a mini five volt fan. It's in front of the SPG 30. That's an air quality sensor that can sense all sorts of stuff like MOX and gas, CO2, and uh, TVOC. So it can do lots of different things. And we, as we were learning about it, we figured we need a way to direct the solder fumes to the sensor without it being displaced by a bigger fan in the back of it. So we, we had that engineering challenge and we figured, hey, we need to put a fan in front of it. A fan for your fan, that means it's overly complicated already as it is. So that's the Noctua fan right there in the back. Um, it is a really silent, really high quality fan. It's only a couple, like 20 bucks or so, but it's awesome that it, it, it can be controlled over PWM. So you can do all sorts of fun stuff with it. Change the speeds and whatnot. So here is the fun house. The fun house is the brains of this project. It has all of the built-in goodies that make these projects possible. It's got a built-in TFT display, buttons, cap touch, NeoPixels, uh, additional ports for a PIR sensor. It has a slider thing here. Like, there's so much stuff to it. We could, we, we're barely using 10% of the fun house. 
wow, it would be awesome to use the slider to control the fan. Yeah. The speed of the fan. Y'all can do that too, oh, totally. Cool. And there's built-in buzzers, so you can have alerts, audio alerts, uh, visual alerts if you want to use the display or the NeoPixels. You have your I2C, um, your StemaQT, you know, breakout here, port, and then two additional, three additional uh, ways. And you can actually power five volt peripherals from any of these three ports, which is how we're able to what? power the uh, five volt mini fan. I didn't know it was all the ports. Yeah, this is really, really awesome. It's, I love the fun house. It's such a great board. It's got a built in on off switch. Built, it even has built in um, humidity and pressure things that we're not even using. <laughs> Um, and then um, we have USB-C or connector there, so very, very awesome. It is, uh, if you don't know about the Fun House, check out you know, the learn guides and stuff on the Fun House, but it is uh, using the ESP32-S2, so that's how it's able to do Wi-Fi connection. Yeah, and the display is a 1.54 1, 1 inch TFT with a 240 by 240, so it's the, uh, it's the uh, what would you call it, like a retina display or something, high dense display. So that's the spiel of it. We're going to walk through the learn guide and uh, just kind of pull out some things uh, from it. But uh, 3D printed enclosure, snap fits. It, they're, they're all the hardware screws just secure all the pieces together. Um, I left it open here so that folks can add on more stuff and it's relatively easy to make connections, disconnect stuff. Um, but yeah, it is just secured to this little bracket. And I, a little bit of a fun note, you can see that I've even angled it by 30 degrees so that it gives you a little bit of a better viewing angle when you look at it dead on so it's not straight at you. Just one of the fun little design things that I think uh, go a long way. Wonderful. And this is just a battery. You can have it powered um, with a 5 volt um, power supply, whether it's on a wall or a 5 volt battery bank. It's all good. Whatever you want. Yeah. And right now we're not reading any uh, solder fumes because uh, our air is pretty clean right now, so we're good. All right. Any questions so far? Let me jump in. I uh, posted no, the video for both. Yeah, uh, this is Liz great. and the video you made on the explanation of this. So a nice little walkthrough showing the IoT capabilities. Some nice uh, lines, charts, or graphs, yeah. that map all of the uh, air quality sensor data. Yeah. Yeah. So check them out. Please do so. Yeah. So uh, all the parts are listed here. So if you want to check out any of the part, all the whole parts list is all listed here. Um, the Noctua fan is probably the only part that's sort of outside of Adafruit, so if you want to pick that up, it, you can get it on Amazon or search your favorite uh, online supplier for a Noctua fan. It is the 140 millimeter style, and there's lots of different styles of Noctua fans. You got to make sure this one is 5 volts, because there's a lot out there that are like 12 volts for PCs and stuff. So yeah, we even, we even stock the carbon filter, which is really great, oddly enough, not oddly enough, but thankfully... It's sized perfectly to fit this project. Like you didn't have to cut well, it. Well, you kind of designed around it, right? But it's designed to fit exactly. a 140 millimeter um, pan, which is great. With the smaller ones, we've 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 made quite a few few extractors now. You have to cut it. You don't have to cut it. That's great. Moving along. All right. All right. Since it's a Circuit Python project, it makes sense to have pages dedicated on documenting how to install CircuitPython on your board. So this is uh, the ESP32-S2. You can download the, uh, the UF2, the latest version of CircuitPython, by heading over to circuitpython.org. All this is nicely documented. And these are kind of mirrored pages from our uh, fun house learn guide. So yeah, it just walks you through it. And even walks you through even the thorough stuff if like you have some of the earlier boards with no bootloader. But chances is that yours is ready to go. Now the Funhouse has some specific libraries for getting this to work. You're going to want to get this list of uh, of libraries, but because it's um, embedded, you can do the pro you can download via the project bundle, and you should be able to get all of these libraries because there's a good amount of uh, dependencies for the Funhouse. You got the portal base, you got bitmap fonts, uh, display text, and I/O. But this is nice, kind of if you were manually doing this, and maybe the project bundle wasn't working or something. This is good. Um, kind of back up to show like this is all the libraries that you need. And of course you need a secrets folder because you're doing Wi-Fi connections. All right. All right, so with the code page you can use the project download bundle button here and this will download all of those libraries and dependencies. There's a good amount of them. So you want to download the project bundle which will give you the code plus all of the libraries which is really cool. 
So Liz did a great job on commenting everything. You can just read through the comments if you're really new to programming in CircuitPython. All the comments kind of give you an idea of what's going on. And you can kind of change values and things as you, as it makes sense to your project. She also made it so that it's easy to kind of uncomment and comment out the type of values that you want to get from your air quality sensor. In this case, you can either choose from TVOC or ECO2. So that's really cool that you can kind of just uncomment. Here's the values for the TVOC, and here's the ones for the EO, ECO2. Depending on your application, you know, you're going to want to see which which is the right one for you, and you can reference the learn guide on the air quality sensor, which we have linked as well. So you can uh, get more specifics on the type of uh, type of data that you're logging. Cool. So it checks every 15. Um, if you're if you're connected to Wi-Fi and 16, 15 seconds pass, it'll log it, uh, send that data to uh, to Adafruit I/O, and then here you can change the names of the um, the feed if you need. You can change it to whatever, but uh, this walks you through um, setting them up. So here are all the kind of structure folder structure that you want. This is really nicely laid out, and um, you have a couple of bitmaps that you'll get as part of the project download bundle. So all those are included as well because they're added to the uh, the repo in Learn. So check that out. And here's what you should look like. Your CircuitPy drive looking nice and filled. Adafruit I.O. setup walks you through setting up your feed. So the fumes is a feed that the code is looking for and the fan speed. So you just want to create these two and then add it to uh, a dashboard. You can name the dashboard whatever you like. Liz named her solder fumes. I think I named mine like fart. <laughs> Not fart. Mm -hmm. uh, smart <laughs> fume <laughs> extractor. <laughs> you y'all can skip this one if you don't. <laughs> like, and um, yeah, so uh, and then it walks you through just adding the feeds to your dashboard using a line chart, and then uh, just selecting the, uh, the the feeds that you want to display visually with the line chart. Pretty straightforward. Um, really good use of uh, like if you're first time doing an IoT project with I with Adafruit IO, this is this is a really good one to try out. Whoops, I clicked on the wrong button. I clicked on this button thinking it was a button. It's actually a screenshot. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but yeah, it's there. Uh, so yeah, that's how you can get your uh, your dashboard set up with, uh, with two line shards. One for, fume, uh, one for fumes and the other one for the fam RPMs. So that's really cool. All right, that's a part of the code. Liz also broke it down, so you got a code walkthrough here that just breaks out all the chunks of code, setting up the sensors, the libraries, Here's the graphics, and there's even further information on the air quality sensor here. Yeah, and then even more information on the EMC uh, 2101 fan controller. So here's how all the graphics are set up. It's bitmaps, doing all the coordinates, for um, positioning them on the display, on the screen. This one here shows the, the labels for the text, their coordinates, their colors, and the type of font they are. Very, very cool to, to have all this um, broken out for you. Then the state machines variables walks you through all the different states because you do have some some uh, some some states where you, on boot up. Well, we'll we'll talk about it here. Here's the Adafruit I/O functions that are there. So here's where you would change the name of your data feed if you want to change that. You would change that here. The loop. So on boot up, it's check. It, it's asking the program asks you, hey, do you want to actually log? your fumes to Adafruit I.O. You can choose either yes or no with one of the hardware buttons. So good use of using the hardware buttons that are built into the uh, built into the fun house. And then so it just walks through um, the, uh, the different states where you are connecting or not connecting. When you're connecting, um, it gives you a nice bitmap as well, telling you that it is connecting. And then when it's done, it presents you with the, uh, the solder fume and the span feeds. So yeah. And it walks you through like how you would uh, kind of remove groups from um, from the uh, from the display and how to display new ones. Yeah, and then uh, the uh, the way the fans RPM is mapped to the SPG30 is with a simple I/O map range. So that function there it kind of walks you here, and this is where the values are. So depending on your values, this is where you want to say like I want 10% to be mapped to. Well, actually, I think it's this way. Yeah, I want 10% of the fan to be mapped to the lowest um, value here in uh, in uh, TVOC, and then if the TOVC reading uh, is 
it goes up to ten, uh, 1,000 uh, units, then we want to make the fan speed be 100%. So that's where you can, you can uh, change those values in the range, in the map range. Very cool. Sweet. Then setting data to Adafruit I.O. Uh, every 15 seconds, it's going to post it. You can change that if you'd like. There's some limitations. So just uh, double check those. Connecting and disconnecting from Wi-Fi is also here set up. And yeah, that's pretty much pretty much all of it. So check that out if you want more thorough walkthrough. I just kind of skimmed it, but you, there's, it's, it's more thorough than what I skimmed. Real quickly, again, the circuit diagram. Um, yeah, if you are interested in making a circuit diagram, you can. Sorry, I, I'm hearing noises. <laughs> We're all good. It's fine. Uh, so Fritzing, uh, Fritzing is the application that you can get. Um, it's open source. I think there's a donation that you need in order to get it, but uh, that's, that's what we. If you want to compile it, you if can you want compile to compile it yourself, it, you and can get it for free. Get it for free. Yes, yes, yes. Um, learn how to compile for free. <laughs> for free. Uh, so this is what we're, the program that we're using. A lot of the Adafruit parts are fritzing objects that you can use in your in your schematics or your uh, circuit diagrams. Uh, this one here, I pulled. I was able to download some third-party um, parts from the community. This is a four-wire PWM fan, and this is a five-volt fan that just has power and ground. So uh, just kind of showing. It's like the same fan, but one has more connections and. Um, I was able to find this uh, this part. You can either search for it, or if you want, you can download um, the Fritzing file, which uh, is, I guess, it's a hiding in the back in the back end here. We have, a, hmm. Let me know if you want that. I'll, I'll, I can I can push. I can add a link to it here. Normally we do that, but in any manner, um, all the wired connections are laid out for uh, accessibility purposes. So that's nice. All the things are laid out there. So, okay. Cool. CAD files, uh, the STLs, you can download the zip file, or you can download the CAD source, which is in Fusion 360, or you can use the STEP file, which has all the original sketches and solid models. Um, when it comes to slicing, uh, you're going to want a build volume with minimum, a 3D printer with a, build, with a minimum build volume as a, of 154 millimeters square. Um, don't need any supports, which is nice, and uh, just use your kind of standard PLA settings. I didn't see any use or any um, reason to use like a different type of filament, like PETG or something. Uh, PLA just worked fine. Um, last week we talked about some techniques that you can do that you can use to slice the fan grill to do different types of infill patterns. The idea is that you would turn off the top and bottom solid layers in your slicer, um, therefore just kind of exposing just the infill pattern, which creates a uh, an intricate pattern for uh, this type of part here, the fan grill. It makes a lot of sense to do that, so that's what I showed last week. And then uh, 3D models of all the parts are available on our GitHub repo, which was uh, recently uh, switched over to a main branch. And I encourage you to do so as well. If you have a GitHub repo, make sure you switch it, change that name to main branch or whatever else. Yeah. So that's the 3D printing page. The rest of the pages just documents how I wired everything up. Um, I like to document uh, the lengths of my wires because the wire lengths um, go a long way when you're trying to keep your project nice and tidy and the assembly manageable. You want to consider measuring your wires. <laughs> and uh, what's the tip always to uh, always add heat shrink first and then solder later, right? So, uh, so setting up the, the mini fan, um, I'm, I'm actually using a three-pin JST cable. I'm just trimming the white um, data wire and just using power and ground because that's really all it needs. But because the um, the ports on the side of the funhouse are three-pin JST cables, I had to kind of use this three-pin JST cable for, for power and ground is all I need. But it's cool that you can you can power um, multiple peripherals uh, through the funhouses. Um, a0, A1, and A2 pin, um, ports on the side. So that's why I'm using a three pin JST cable for the fan, the mini fan. And then for the Noctua fan, the Noctua fan has four wires, um, power ground, and then not serial clock and serial data. That's kind of what I thought. I thought this fan was. 
kind of powered over I squared C. It is not. It's powered through PWM and two of the connections. Uh, one wire is for TAC and the other wire is for PWM. On the back of the EMC there is a pin labeled FAN and FAN pin is really the PWM pin. And I also noted, this is just a kind of a note, um, the colors of the, of the fan, d ignore them. You want to focus on the, uh, the, the, the order of the pins is what you want to look at, not the color of the wires. I went through a bit of a saga with, the <laughs> with wiring up my fan, and it turns out that, yeah, the colors aren't exactly one-to-one -one matching, especially with the circuit diagram. Mm. So just, just make sure that the, the pin order placement is what you're looking at and not the color of the wire. That's all I'm saying, right? Okay. So yeah, double check the connections are solid. Wonderful. And then the last page is the assembly, putting it all together. So a list of hardware screws and standoffs that you need. Um, and you know, the order of it is in a way where it's like, um, what would you say the order is uh, chronological? The order is important. You got to follow this order. What is the chronological? It's chronological. There's gonna be some, uh, some yeah. You don't don't do it backwards. Do yeah, <laughs> it's very linear. You have to follow this way. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is the right way to, to kind of follow it. Um, yeah, you, yeah. So lots of screws is what I can say here. Um, but lots of snap fits as well. The carbon filter just kind of rests in and has a retainer bit that keeps it snap fitted. Um, I'm using hex nuts and inside of the uh, the front cover are these little kind of these little recessed spots for the hex nut to make it a little bit easier on the assembly there's are little things that you can do to make the assembly a lot better like easier and so yeah lots of screws so many screws eh. <laughs> and then there's the final build so so if you want to build one um check it out Check out the learn guide, check out the code, remix it, have fun with it, make it something else. Yeah, appreciate everybody uh, checking it out too. So that is this week's project. Shout out to Liz. She, she, does, she does amazing ideations and code. And super awesome to, uh, to collab. Yeah, check out the video too. Whoa, what was that? Oh, did you hear that? I did. I think that was like, Discord catching up with all the things you posted oh. <laughs> here. So Pedro posted a nice slew of links. Excellent. Yeah, we got all of the uh, fritzing, the uh, CAD, and all of the, I'm oh, sorry, I'm reading over here, yeah, the Slack. It's good. Uh, you got added. Uh, oh, maybe that's what it was. <laughs> I got added. They added me. Yeah, all the, all the links to all the parts and all that. Wonderful, all, all right. Stuff that you're I'd gonna need for all the resources. Yeah. And if you wanna grab all of the fritzing parts, like you said, I always frequently go in there and grab parts that we don't have. Yes. All right, next up, we're, we're pretty much kind of done with the project, but I do wanna share one of my favorite things about it, the CAD animation. So I wanna share with you this CAD animation. And one of, one of the things I like about CAD animation is that, yeah, it shows you how the pieces fit together, but also, answers to an engineering problem. Here it, it shows how the the SPG30 air quality sensor is fitted behind this fan and the bracket has a hole in the back so that the fumes can actually exit out of. It was really important that I had the fan enclosed and also have an ability to exit out because if I didn't have a hole in the back there your fumes would just stay stuck there. So it was a bit of a a trial and error thing. The original idea was to use a funnel, and I had a funnel, but my air, like without it being, without the fan being and the sensor being completely covered, all of that fumes just kind of spit out the, you know, it didn't actually go into the uh, into the into the sensor. So what we've done is we kind of DIY'd our own PM two point five like thing that's what they have built-in fans so that it is mm -hmm. it is directing the airflow and that was like such a weird thing I've never had to deal with airflow and uh, using a CAD animation here really illustrates how uh, the secrets just inside uh, there's no other way to show it and um, uh, I mean I've been they, doing I, these do they have simu simulations on this for like airflow probably I, not, right? I think they do but uh, I just didn't didn't go too deep. Yeah, into that's, a, the that's rabbit a nice hole. little rabbit hole to get into. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's like, where do I? Yeah, I could, I, I might revisit that, but 
no, that's just too much. <laughs> yeah, let that's me animate much. the cat. <laughs> just yeah. kind of be happy with that. And, and uh, okay, we've seen enough about it. I don't know what else we can say. The hardware. So the other thing I think you might have mentioned already was uh, at first you thought that it wasn't working, but it needed to rest for about uh, how long to yeah, accumulate that's a to great the air. Point. Yeah. So. So the, the, the sensor has its own uh, kind of things here. It, right now it needs to kind of acclimate. It needs, to, it needs a couple of hours to like sense the, sense the room and <laughs> it needs to sense the air quality in the room for a little bit. So right now that's why it's set to zero. But it, you give it like an hour or so and it'll start, uh, it'll start taking in proper readings. And you can log all that and see it all in the REPL too. Um, and there's some other things you can do to calibrate the sensor. Um, there's some documentation to take a look at, but yeah, that's kind of skinny. Just let it. I had to let it sit for a little bit before it was getting good readings. Yeah, um, Stuart had a good comment. I was like, I haven't wondering, how, you know, more about exploding um, animations and using the animation workspace mm. in Fusion 360. Yeah, there like is a layer by layer I have, so like Pedro that. will pull it up, and it's just a good introduction to it. Um, I guess some of the tips I have for, for I should I should really revisit that. I'm learning a lot of new things with animating um, huge amounts of hardware screws. I found that kind of grouping screws uh, with, into a an, into a component helps keep your timeline from just being this massive scrolling thing. But it's it's pretty relatively easy to animate uh, parts in uh, Fusion 360. There are some little things to look out for like rotating kind of gets a little bit weird so I, I I tend to do all my rotations with the space mouse um, I highly recommend a space mouse it's a uh, it's this little thing here I also did a kind of a review video on when I first got my space mouse it's just this this little thing that uh, that has like this little knob and you can rotate pan tilt um, orbit all that sort of stuff it's not a mouse it's 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 only works with 3D CAD uh, programs like Fusion, um, Maya, probably Rhino, other things like that. But this is how you're able to get super buttery smooth rotations and movements um, with a space mouse. So that's my my recommendation. Yeah. Duestra says. Uh, you used to do a lot of animation with PowerPoint. Awesome, yeah. I didn't know you could do uh, animations in PowerPoint. Maybe like kind of keyframe things. Sorry, it took forever to find that. Cool, yeah. Yeah. Right, Excellent. Here is a video on how to make those exploding animations. Yeah. How to turn them into GIF animations as well. Right, cool. That's a good one, yeah. Yeah, that was a little bit of a workflow too making uh, the movie file into a GIF has its own challenges. Optimizing frames and uh, what else, the pattern, uh, what's it called? When you uh, lossly turn that up. Any hoodle, that's a little bit of insight into animation stuff. I'll probably revisit it as a layer by layer. I got a yeah, that backlog one was, of lists. That one was a little bit of a scroll down the list, so I'm sure there's been lots of UI improvements and a bunch of updates since that's happened, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely yeah. getting some yeah. ups on redoing that one. Cool. Excellent. And of course, search other other folks have done some tutorials. Wonderful. All right, that is this week's project. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Uh, next up, we're gonna do what are you prototyping? Uh, it's a little bit beyond prototyping, and as I said earlier, this is probably gonna be released later <laughs> in about an hour. Looks like uh, Dylan is working on this one. Yeah. Cool. So by uh, Ask an Engineer tonight, I think we'll have yeah, another Yeah, probably before guide. noon it should come out. This is the Jeopardy game show. Uh, oh, I think this battery's dead. Mm. Let me get that other battery. Here you are. Let's see if we got any juice in this one left. Juice. About two bars. I need juice. Give me juice. All right, so insane with all the pop culture stuff. Of course, Lamar and Phil wanted to make a Jeopardy game controller uh, with the Circuit, Play Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. Mm. So what's going on here is uh, you can use this standalone or you can have it uh, be button presses for either a computer or a mobile device. And what it is is just a game show button. So whoever presses it first 
It'll illuminate that color of the contestant or the, uh, the handle that you're holding. Uh, Dylan made this all in circuit Python. So of course you can edit the code to change the colors or change the sound effects and uh, change like the HDMI keys that is being sent over to whatever specific game that you guys are playing. It doesn't have to be Jeopardy. So any type of game where you know you want to, uh, uh, let's say like, uh, like a drawing game or something, like charades or something. And instead of shouting out what you think the answer would be, you can be a little bit more civil with it and uh, have uh, these guys uh, uh, dictate which whoever, whatever player pushed the button first because it, it'll illuminate. Mm -hmm. So uh, let, let, me, let me go through the function of it here. So uh, after, so when you first start off, you push the button to clear and then once more to enable the players to be able to push the button. And then they just go ahead and push whichever one goes in first and then you can clear it again and start over. So a nice little functionality there. What I really like about this project is the modularity of it. So everything is screw or snap fit. So this entire <laughs> cool. uh, trigger buzzer, I think is what they're called in Jeopardy. Mm. Uh, it's all screwed in and you were using these quick connects. Yeah, these so are you great. Can easily, um, the uh, quick connects allow you to add, easily change out your buttons. So if you wanted a different style, if you wanted to add like LEDs on there as well, you can get all fancy with that. So these just screw on like that and then we're using the uh, jumper cables on this so you can easily disconnect or extend this if you have a uh, bigger uh, like playing area, like on the table or something. And then for the controller box, it's all snap fit together as well. Uh, quick connects on the arcade button as well. And if you look inside here, the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit, we soldered on some headers on there as well. So all of these can be easily disconnected if you like plugged the wire into the wrong uh, like color or the pad that detects what, uh, what controller is being used. You can swap that around. That also makes it easy to assemble this. So when you uh, mount your circuit playground, uh, blue fruit, you don't have to have these wires stringing. You don't mm -hmm. have to do this order of operation dance. Yeah. You can easily just plug those in as soon as the, uh, the uh, board is mounted. On the bottom of the case here, you have the SnapFit uh, little grill for the speaker, We're using the stem of the speaker to uh, do the audio. And we also have the, uh, oh wow, I think the battery, when the battery dies, you have like that crazy audio going on. <laughs> Let me just disconnect it. It's the battery if you want to grab another one. Ooh. Great. So uh, Where are all the batteries we're doing at? Phil B's <laughs> little trick of flipping the speaker so it the, the acoustics of it's a little more louder when it's facing up against the board. So we're having the audio raised that way as well. And there is, and we got a little uh, pot here that allows you to uh, lower or raise the volume as well. We have that going on. And then everything just connects with the Stemma cable. So that just easily plugs into the board here. And you can have that uh, be uh, nice and modular as well. That's because cool. we have to make sure that the parts don't, you know, sort of uh, fly around inside of the case. They are mounted down with some hardware screws. So that's the only thing that is not snap fit. <laughs> Go ahead and uh, hit the button so we can hear that lovely, oh yeah, how loud it is. So here we're gone. I was saying that we're using Phil B's trick of uh, yes. flipping the stem speaker over mm -hmm. so that the, uh, the the other side is hitting the PCB board and uh, yeah. uh, amplifying the acoustics of it. So right. it the PCB surface becomes the speaker. And if you haven't checked out Phil B's one minute videos, I think he releases them every week, mm -hmm. uh, chock full of great little nuggets of uh, whether it be like programming or history or uh, just some retro tech that interests uh, Phil B. So definitely check those out on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, pretty much it for this uh, case. Of course, it's printed in a natural uh, PLA white filament. So it's giving us that nice diffusion on there. You know, line these little tabs. Oh, mm. can't see that. So light the little tabs that snap fit together in here. Snap that in. Yay. And then uh, USB uh, powered to plug into any battery or wall outlet. I and still can't believe the circuit playground is fitted in there. It yeah. just, the, once it's like gone, the scale or something about the proportions just throws me off. We're like, there's no way the circuit playground could fit in there. And yet there it is, defying physics. Yeah, so very nice. Can't wait till uh, we have our favorite host Seriously, that'll be like going on. I think it's like there. July, something like in the middle of the month somewhere. We'll have uh, LeVar who, uh, 
well known for playing. Uh, like I see it, I just don't believe it, y'all. Like, <laughs> Star Trek and kind of, Rating Rainbow. What kind of weird <laughs> universe this is? Who is Lars? What's going on here? <laughs> That'd be so fun if we had Lars in the background here. Oh, <laughs> hitting the button, yeah. Oh. So uh, I don't want to uh, lock out um, on the learn guide. I wanted to go through it, but it just hit me. It's like, oh, well, uh, Dylan's working on the yeah. page, so I don't want to <laughs> lock her out of the guide. So we'll, mm -hmm. we'll review that next week. But it's a nice little uh, build on uh, the printing and all that, the tips for using supports. We do, I do have to use supports on this just because of the way that... Uh, yeah, it's this got some bottom. interesting geometry that uh, makes it so that it's just more of a single part as opposed to like five parts. Yeah. You just got one. And then we covered the Fusion 360 plugin. That's right. Um, yeah. Vernoy plugin that was updated a couple months ago. Mm. Uh, we're happy, very yeah. happy to see the update for that. That for allows sure. you to generate these very nice Vernoy shapes. And it doesn't have to be stars. You have like all these different cells and like the spacing, the angle, and all that. Uh, to generate a custom speaker grill. It's a really fun one with the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The family, the friends. Oh, and one cool thing the too Jeopardy. that Dylan added on this. I haven't seen this in any of our pro uh, projects or boards, yeah, or just projects in general. Uh, the ability to turn the Bluetooth on and off. So the little slide switch that's uh, embedded, that's part of the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit mm -hmm. allows you to turn that on and off. So if you don't want to use this as an HID, uh, human interface device with your computer or your mobile device, you can turn that off. Uh, one of the reasons why was because as I was testing this, sending all the buttons, I was uh, mm, sending right. it to the phone that was connected, that it was connected to, and on the lock screen, you can only uh, attempt uh, so many times of trying to guess your password, so yep. it locked out my phone. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> so that's, right. Uh, that's why I requested that, and that's a very handy feature. For today. sure. Mode select, that's what that switch is for. Yeah. You can f have full access to it in CircuitPython. You can do all sorts of mode selection mm -hmm. um, for your programs. And of course, a bunch of this is being uh, added uh, by uh, um, not only Dylan, but Dan Halbert as mm -hmm. well, doing a lot of uh, Bluetooth uh, workflow stuff in there, along with Scott. That's right. I have a lot of very handy uh, Bluetooth uh, like file sending stuff coming up very soon in CircuitPython yeah. 7. Soon you'll be able wait. to uh, edit the code on your phone without having to use a wire. Mm -hmm. You do the over there um, code edits. It's going to be pretty wild. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Stuart Riggs is asking, uh, yeah, the blue fruit on and off switch. I think by default, it, I don't think it actually does anything, right? No. Like when you, no, you have to program it. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's just an input, mm -hmm. you know, data input. Um, yeah, so you can program super, to do whatever. Super handy. Yep. And of course, all the wires. Uh, we're using the silicone uh, coated jumper cables for this. And I'll go more in detail. I did have to make some custom uh, uh, quick necks. Uh, took the little connector part in the way that it comes and then sure, soldered yes. it onto these jumper cables just to make it a lot more easier yeah, for it's uh, a good sizing so it could actually fit in there. So yeah. you can screw it in there like that. Yeah. And it'll have room without having too much uh, wires all over the place. Oh, I have to align all of these it's tabs. Tabs. Yeah. One of the that? reasons why you want to do tabs as opposed to a screw is because you'll have your cables, your wires, will your wires and cables will twist. So having a snap is a little bit better. All right. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. Rex said it was a Jeopardy pun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great. All right. So look out for the guy. This should be out, I think, Dylan said. Later tonight, uh, I think. In about an hour or so. Oh, Before dinner. Ask an Engineer. Oh, and we'll the see. video will come out next week. Yes. We're going to have fun this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> like playing it, actually using it. I think we already shot all the footage. <laughs> we're working and we're like playing <laughs> Jeopardy with the, the seven-year-old. <laughs> All right, well, on to Shop Talk. I got a little bit of a CNC uh, binge here. I'm still CNC milling some stuff. Last week, we took a look at, I think we took a look at milling some keycaps out of wood. This week, I am re revisiting the Cutie Pie PCB adapter. Cutie Pie is a great little board. It now comes with the RP2040 chip. And uh, I really want a way to secure the Cutie Pie with mounting screws. There's no mounting tabs on the Cutie Pie board. So what I did was I designed a little PCB adapter that has two mounting holes and it has those uh, surface mountable pads so that you can solder the, the Cutie Pie board directly to this single layered copper FR1 board. 
So I'm using the desktop PCB milling machine from Bantam Tools, formerly known as Other Mill. And uh, I just really love the fact that I can use this machine and then literally like one minute I have a PCB that I designed. Like that's just mind blowing. It's still, wow, what, what are well, awesome what's, tool. what's uh, making you, you know, so ah over it is having a PCB that you ordered at Osh Park, and yeah. by the time it got here, you ordered you know, like in Revision That's 5. That's right, yeah. Um, so, with that, I, I understand that not everybody's going to have access to a mill, so I have the file uploaded and shareable now, so it, it's a bit of a niche thing. I don't know if folks really need this. I just really want this, so I went out of my way to make this. So I'm sharing it on uh, the Osh Park website, oshpark.com. Let me get a link to it. Uh, I don't know how to do that. Uh, embed link, I guess. No, that's not it. Permalink, that's the one I want. So I'll, I'll drop this here and y'all can take a look at it. It was designed with Eagle CAD from Autodesk. Um, it's a board file um, and all of Lamar's work is as a board file. Um, I think there's some tools if you're using a different um, CAD package, I think you can convert it to something else, but it's there if folks want to use the library object to make their own cutie pie adapter boards. Maybe you can use that as a reference. Um, yeah. So I didn't finish this video, sorry. <laughs> uh, but this is just an insight of uh, milling the PCB. Here I'm using a 132 inch flannen mill, my go-to tool for doing PCB milling. Um, and uh, the FR1 boards are pre-cut, pre-size. Uh, you, can, you can pick these up from Amazon or Bandom Tool sells a nice pack of them. But yeah, it's a single-sided uh, FR1 board and I'm using double-sided scotch tape to secure it to my spoil board. That's how I do it. The way you line it up is you just do it with your hands. You just line it up <laughs> in the corner and there you go. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have any fancy probing tools yet. But uh, yeah. Like I said, five minutes. I made like three of them, or four of them rather. That's a that's a really good tip. Like I always think I'll just make one of something, but that's never the case. You always need to make more than two because if you fail one, then you have one, and when you have one, you have none. So, uh, who who said that? Said that. You ever heard that before? If you have one, you have none. Yeah. It happens all the time. Yeah, because <laughs> like I don't have an extra with well, printers I do. and right. I only have one PCB mill, so. <laughs> but in any manner, um, I messed one up because I uh, was kind of. You, you can't really see it here, but I, when you're doing multiple PCBs in the Bantam Tool software, you can manually uh, duplicate a G code file, and there it is. And when I did it, I actually ate the other one uh, so i kind of milled <laughs> on the first <laughs> one over it. so i had to shift it over some more but uh yeah it's fine i use alcohol to uh to soften up the adhesive from the glue and that really helps out a lot it, it gets a little messy but that's just the name of the game when you're cnc milling and here i am using the solder fume extractor you'll Actually be seeing this here, quite yeah. a bit in the upcoming projects <laughs> yeah so that was cool and uh, temple very very small you know but you can definitely solder it up you know they're 0.01 spacing so pretty pretty standard header sizes right and i'm left-handed sorry <laughs> so that's why it looks weird but uh i got my stick vise that's all working good and um i just put an order into osh park um because i want nice purple pcbs right you just got a purple piece of bridge and um yeah that's what i got I wanted to show it off, but I think it's already embedded in the project you're using this on. Yeah, sure. I don't think you want to release it. Yeah, we're going to look at that next week. Okay. But that was fun. So I cool. really like the Bandom Tools. That's it over here. That's so fun. It's fun. <laughs> we do fun stuff. So that is this week's uh, Shop Talk. Yeah, right. We got a little PCB for the Cutie Pie. And uh, I'm, I hope folks make more things with the Cutie Pie. It's a great board. Um, USB-C, small, it's cheap. <laughs> it's got a lot of... A lot of I.O. built-in stemma, QT connector is huge. You'll see that in the next week's project. Can't really see it in there, but there it is. You can barely see, like, what is that? Might have to, it might have to do with one of the themed key caps. Yeah, that we have don't worry, you'll see. <laughs> and then for Shop Talk, take a look here. 
Cutie pie oh. RP2040. Oh, I didn't drink it. Dang it. I wanted to show it, that the. It's got a bit of a, a gator friend. What is his name? Al? Hmm. First name Al, last name Gator? We don't know. <clears throat> oh, Avro is suggesting uh, or asking if you did the dark mode for the PCB. You know, where it has like the orange or is like inverted right for the PCB for the uh, Oshpock War. I'm such a fan of purple. I just. Sorry. Like, I love black, too. I'm wearing a black shirt, but, like, something about purple, like, just hits me in the heart. I'm just mm -hmm. like, oh, purple. But, yeah, this is a shout-out to Bruce Yan, the creative director here at Adafruit. He does all of the artwork and characters, and this is a new one that uh, PT and, and Bruce collaborated on. Um, very, very, very cool artwork. But, uh, yeah, this is the character for the RP2040 Trinky. So cool. His tail is a Stemma QT connector, yeah. and his, his buck teeth. Well, it's a USB connector, so it's really cool. <laughs> Very relevant yeah. here in Florida. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Home of the gators. Yeah. I'd like to hear more background story of uh, the gator, how it came to be and all that. So <laughs> I'm going to lean on Phil tonight to talk about it. But I'm just showing it here as a sneak peek. I think he already posted it on the old He socials. did, he did. But I want the background story. Why? Why a gator? <laughs> Why a panda? You know, that sort of thing. So that's uh, Shop Talk. We're going to do Community Makes now. Are you guys ready? Um, we have two this week. Let's see. Two. Is that next? Yep. Oh, no, I didn't put the video here. Which one? Oh, no, I see it. It's there. All right, Community Makes this week. So. First one is from our very own John Park. He made this awesome Deco 2 key uh, pad. pad. Macro pad. Macro pad. Yeah. For playing Usmu. Video game. Soku. Osu. Osu. So this is using the uh, tree key, two key. No, wing. yeah, it's a neo key. Neo for the key wing. for the wing. Yeah, yeah. And so super uh, uh, like modular design. It press fits in there. Uh, yeah, the as a built-in key goes on top, and then the keys yeah, yeah. can press fit or slot into. Oh, this is so cute. And they are <laughs> illuminated. The keys that we're using are the uh, what are these? Is this it? Double key. I don't know, but you can plug it in here. And uh, it should start um, messing up my wire casts. So uh, <laughs> be careful. I'm sure it'll mess something so up. So, JP showed this off on his show, I think, like a week or two ago. So, go ahead and show it out. Cool. Yeah, this is DA, DA, DA. Just type in DA. Yeah, cool. And I really love the way that these illuminate. It has this nice edge lick, uh, look. So, mm -hmm. these are the keycaps. Mm -hmm. And I'm using a little whisk tool here, as you can see. Yeah, we started stocking these tools. Actually, this is a different one. It oh, this, right. Uh, this well, a type here. of tool, rather. Yeah. So we can oh my go gosh, what are you doing? <laughs> remove this guy and show. You can switch out your keys. I'm just using the brown key on this one. And what do we like is about, uh, you can easily swap these out. You can see where the NeoPixel is on there. You can just line this up with the key slots. Oh, I'm being blinded. You're and so just aggressive. Just pop that in there like that. And then, like uh, we showed in the video, the bottom here pops off. Mm -hmm. Just disconnect this guy. You have access to your reset button here on the uh, wing. And then oh, I think I have to take both of these out. Put a little whisker here. Mm -hmm. So let me say some words, all right? Yeah. All right, JP designed this in Rhino, which is really cool to see. It's kind of like this node-based sort of modeling approach. I thought that was really, really cool. And you made it so that the key plate is built into the enclosure, so it's really cool. It does have a little bit of supports, but with that, you get a nicer, um, more assembled part when you use supports. So, hey, shout out for using supports. Not a bad thing. Super I keep telling modular. myself that. <laughs> so super modular here, you can see the uh, two key, Neo key. Oh my god, I keep calling it the wrong thing. Neo key to feather two. wing. <laughs> Just plugs in. We're using a feather M4 here. Mm -hmm. And the circuit python, of yeah. course, and it's just connect together like that. And then the uh, you're gonna need some ports on the bottom here for the overhangs. Uh, nothing too bad though. Using the exact same uh, modified support settings that we always talk about with the uh, the Z mm -hmm. offset being like at 0.21, and then the density of the supports being like six percent, four percent. And then the width of the supports being like 0.2, so they're super easy to remove. Mm -hmm. I got a bit of a access to your USB there. Yeah. 
I have a bit of a meme thing I want to say. Let's see, let me try this out. For the folks that uh, are saying this is a waste of the M4. Okay, what are you doing? <laughs> they, somebody said it was a waste of the M4, and I just took it off, and I was like, Oh, you can reuse it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't even need the, the visual. Sh I don't need words. Like, it <laughs> what a waste of the I didn't waste I it. pop it off, and I'm like, OK, let me use it somewhere yeah. else. So this is uh, actually, <laughs> that's a good point, actually, why we like doing modularity for our projects. We pre-plan pre it that way so we can reuse these again, because then, you know, as you can see in the background, you can't see behind us, but projects stack up <laughs> if we don't yeah. do that. I, I do. I, I tend to rip off the um, the M4s and just reuse them all over the places. Yeah, so this it's really awesome. It really is the thing that makes a, an ecosystem. But and the yeah. bottom lid snap fits, and then of course you can choose whatever one uh, keys that you want. Yeah, that's great. Uh, the other one, I, I thought we were out of these, but obviously no, I got more, more clicky. Yeah, I did see. Uh, switch these out for the clickies, and then have one brown clicky, and just slots right in like that. Ah, that, and like that. Hopefully, I didn't bend the keys on that. Uh, no. <laughs> or the, the uh, I did do that once and was able to bend it back out. Also, I want to yeah, pull like up. <laughs> I want to pull up the learn guide because this is a learn guide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you trying to do now? Unbend this. It's fine though. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got a I got so a stunt aggressive. double right here. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if we pull up the guide, you can see all of the code that is uh, helping that run this in CircuitPython. Yeah, I think it's using the debounce library as well from uh, yeah, data yeah. styles. But yeah, it's uh, using the Feather RP. I mean NRF fifty two eight forty, but that's just the one that was in stock. It'll work with any Feather that's kind of capable, mm -hmm. right? Um, so yeah, nice short guide. From JP, sweet, uh, sweet code here. So check it out. Nice little simple project to hold you over while he's on vacation. Yeah, for sure. And uh, here's some more stuff on custom key mapping. Got a great code uh, breakdown as well, so you can get a good look at all the stuff we were new to it. Very cool. Oops. I hope I didn't do anything. <laughs> What'd you do? You hit <laughs> Just AB. press AB. Yeah, nothing yet. Really? Okay. All right. So uh, shout out to JP. Great design. Great guide. Great code. Circuit Python. Yay. Neo key. Very, All right. Very handy. Yeah. So it is community mates makes. So this week the toaster. This is an SD card toaster holder. This is from uh, Diffa Pro. Diffa Pro. And it's a nice small print and place um, design here. I'm this gonna pull up the uh, the page. This is another one of those tolerance testing prints. It prints a place so you can see if uh, your calibration is all set up nice on your printer. There's a little mechanism there that pops the SD cards out. Like a real toaster. And then, of course, testing the tolerances on your SD cards. I don't know about y'all, but I use SD cards still a lot because, like, our camera. <laughs> yeah, this isn't a regular SD card. This is those uh, right. it's super fat ones. SD cards, 32 gigs. Th this we one of our smaller ones. Right. Here's the bigger <laughs> one, right? Well, what I'm more interested in, the extra pad that you have on the back there. Oh, Doesn't I never look, noticed that. Yeah, that's not... Yeah, that's these not are for our Blackmagic Pocket mm -hmm. 4K cinema camera yeah, that yeah. we really like. Mm -hmm. And um, we use them all every day. I know there's micro SDs sort of taken over, but I'm sure you probably have some use of an SD card holder. But any manner, shout out to uh, the person on on Colts 3D for sharing the design. You should have called this. It's a free this. design. You can check it out. Really nice GIF as well. Yeah, you should have called this an SD card launcher because. Ooh, ooh. hold on. <laughs> let me go with that. Let me get that on the camera. Oh, Let's do it again. I got my goalie here. Do it over there. And then we'll make it. Oh, goal. <laughs> you got one. The 64 is the winner. <laughs> so yeah, nice little way to test out tolerances or uh, stow your SD cards away. It was that animated movie where there was a toaster and he's talking. Remember that movie? I do not. It's an animated movie with a talking toaster. Yeah. Discord, if you guys, if if you folks remember, let me know what that movie is. Toaster. He's a he's a happy toaster. Hmm. I think the aliens. brave little toaster. The brave little toaster. <laughs> I know what we're watching with Gavin tonight. 
<laughs> I don't remember this one. Yeah, it's a great... Uh, 1987. Is it Disney? Hmm. American-British animated musical film adapted from the 1980s novel The Brave Little Toaster by Thomas M. Dish. Hmm. That would have been a nice little way to uh, uh -huh. call back that, adding some little eyes yeah. on it. Thank there. you, Bruce. I, I knew you I knew you would. <laughs> Alvaro <laughs> saying that the SD card uh, keeps... He needs one because the Roomba keeps eating his cards. <laughs> oh, that's... Uh. Hmm. Good way to clean them? Uh-huh. All right. Well... Let's keep this continue then with uh, the community make. So shout out if you want to print your toaster. Uh, we have a link in the. Where did it go? Yeah, it's great. It prints in under. It's like an hour, I think. Uh, probably just because of the time lapse setting. But it's a nice one there. A little bit under an hour and standard settings, no sports. Yeah, and it's super there. satisfying when you pop this off the bed and the little hinge works. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. Definitely wanna. Oh, and I have not been posting links. Let me see. This is the toaster link. All right, did you fidget? So huge shout out to uh, the person for posting this up. It's also on Thingiverse. Uh, Deha Pro Designs. Very cool. And then the link to JP's uh, guide for the two key deco on micro pad. All right. Cool, now we're gonna go into the community side of the makes, folks that are posting up their makes on socials and Thingiverses and beyond. First up, check it out. Somebody already made JP's Deco keypad. Oh, snap. Make Lively, shout out to this person. Make Lively, posted this up, and it even has a little kitty paw. It looks great in pink. No way. Yeah, it looks great. Easy print, I printed the top side down to use less support material. Mm, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, printed on the Creelty Ender 3 Pro. No rafts, a little bit of supports. Ah, Susan saying that that's uh, that's, that's her. Make Light Lee <gasps> is Susan. Hi, Susan. Thank you for posting this up. It's a super great color choice as well. Yeah, I love the pink. Great name. I like your handle. Make Lively. So shout out to you for, for posting that. That's excellent. All right, we got another one here. Oh, you, you remember this one, Pedro? I love showing these because you have no idea what this is going to be, right? Yeah, I don't get the notification. This is something you designed. Do you remember this? What is this? Oh, it looks like a remix of it, though. It is. Nice. I said it was a remix. Yeah, so this <laughs> is a uh, charge cable holder. Yeah, for a Tesla um, car. So yeah. uh, I forget the name of what specific plug that they use. Right, so you modeled it with a freeform sculpting tools in Fusion yeah, 360 yeah. to get to this, organ, this really organic curvy shape. organic shape and there's some extra rails and stuff for the screw so it can actually come off of the rail. Really, really cool technique there using kind of a 3D printed mm -hmm. you know, rail so that you can mount it and dismount it. And uh, yeah, it looks great. It's just a little, cool. little, little cable holder because uh, well, they don't really come with one, right? And, no, so they very cool remix, and um, let's read a little bit about it. It fits the North American Tesla charger connectors, designed to be printable without supports. Both pieces should be printed in their backs flat against the build plate. Yeah. Um, printed the mounting rail with 100% infill to prevent cracking from over tightening the screws. It's a good technique. Mounting rail is designed with number six screws. Those are US screws. Pan head style, not counter shunk. Yeah, good, good, good. Uh, thanks, Aaron. It was printed on a monoprice printer. It's so very, very cool. Yeah, I like the, uh, um, the, way, the design, because I, I do remember I did have to use supports in my design, so mm. very handy to uh, have it uh, not need supports there. Yeah, that's great. So check that out, and thank you. I think I've received your A. Parker 127 for posting cool. up your Remax. All right, next up we got another, is it a Remax? It might be. A lot of Remixes this week. Let's take a look. This is a make from Jane Ish. Jane Sh Ayn Sh Ayn Shish. Posted up a, the Keyblade from Kingdom Hearts. This is one of my favorite uh, props that we've designed. It all screws together with custom coils and it's been, I think, painted here. Like, yeah, so originally in like, red and pink colors and then um, I think sanded down and post-processed. I'll, I'll read the description in a minute here, but uh, here are the photos. And there it is mounted on the wall, looking really nice and shiny. Uh, nope, no comments, so that's good. But uh, shout out to I-A-N-E-S-C-H, Thingiverse user. Uh, if you're a fan of Kingdom Hearts, check it out. And now on to the last one. This is a really cool remix, theme of the show, remixing. 
This is the Darksaber build. And um, Think of Your are technically busted. Remix the pommel to work with their bad or 12 oh, volt nice. like power drill battery. Huh. It's so like use what you got laying around. They oh, did it. Wow. Yeah, this is this is excellent. So got some nice LEDs Looks going like it's on a there. High density LED strip. Too. I think so. Yeah. So they use like more LEDs. It's 12 volt powered and it's got a beefy heavy battery right there. So that's great. And the pommel has been redesigned to fit that. And hey, it looks great. Oh, it looks really yeah, good. Because once your hands are there, it's gonna yeah. you're gonna look good. So that was really cool. And there's a nice description here. I challenged myself to see if I could get my 12 volt Bosch drill battery to fit into the pommel of the Darksaber. I had a lot of fun redesigning the pommel. I wanted a cheap route, so I just put in some basic white LEDs. I found the ultra skinny LED lights on Amazon, link. Eventually, I plan on getting the multicolored Neopixel lights in soundboard. Sweet. Sweet, yeah. This is great. I like it when folks just kind of do it with parts that they already have or parts that they, they get somewhere else. It's always fun, too. But yeah, the Darksaber. Yeah. Very, very, very cool. Again, I Can't wait for poke. season two, or yeah. three, three. Again, I gotta poke fun at the one that is available at Galaxy's Edge. It's a, uh, does not Lackluster. look as cool. <laughs> Lackluster. Doesn't, yeah, it doesn't look as cool as this. Yeah, that's fine. You can build your own, it's okay. And that's this week's uh, Community Makes. Shout out to everybody for posting up their makes. Special shout out to Make Lively for actually being in the show yeah. there. <laughs> this is the first. Very, very cool season. All right, so that's going to be it for this show, but stay tuned later tonight. It's going to be... What's happening later tonight? Show and tell, Lamar and Phil. This <gasps> is full no, half hour of showing off all your cool projects, retro tech, or just a little tour of your workspace. Uh, Lamar and Phil will be there to hang out and check out all the things you guys are working on. Then immediately after that will be a full hour of Ask an Engineer. Lamar Phil cover all of the news going on in the maker world, as well as all the cool new projects and products that are coming out. And discount code, don't forget discount codes are discount code. back. So That's right. Fill up your cart. There are constantly, especially like on Wednesday, as it gets near the uh, afternoon, check out adafruit.com slash new. And you can check out all the new products that are coming out. That's right. We, looks like we got the uh, Adafruit etched keycaps coming in oh you're just teasing soon. us you're just teasing us we're a little bit over so i'm gonna yeah yeah all right speed from, it up yeah, yeah all right yeah. cool um check that out uh everybody, shout out to, everybody's on vacation yeah i was gonna like say John. shout out to jp he'll be back next week uh, i shout think no i think two weeks two there's weeks? that uh scott as well john and scott so, just go, go through the so, graphics yeah scott yeah. he's uh, he's off again yep. this week so uh, well we'll see you when you come back yeah take you all the time you need and um just a quick kind of note um, Foamy guy is doing live streams in on Friday, so check him out. You during can, Scott's usual during Scott's time, season so time, check, that check out. it out. And you can check it, check out the the links in the um, in Discord. Yeah, That's Discord. where Foamy guy will post it. And shout out to Foamy guy for doing the live streams. Yeah. All right, uh, and, and then Lady Ada, you know, on Sunday she's still doing Sundays, so check out her out on yep. Sundays. Check out the adventures of switching over a lot of the tree key boards over to another uh, yeah. Sandy uh, Arduino core compatible chips. Right, for the Seesaw. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you've been watching 3D Hangouts. Happens every Wednesday since, what, 2013? Don't date 14? us. We just started doing the show. <laughs> <laughs> We're like episode 332. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, cool. can't wait to get to 1,000. Like, uh, shuffling our feet around all old. And <laughs> anyway. All right, that's it for this week. Don't forget to make a great day, folks. We'll see you tonight. Bye.